What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode two of the Stand Up Guys podcast, the deuce, as they call it in the podcast business, and we are going to drop a number two right into your ears today. <laughs> I, once again, am your host, the incomparable Zach Jones, alongside my brother from the same father, Lester Jones. I'm Lester Jones. <laughs> wow. Still, still going. <laughs> that seems like that's like a Brian Fellow's uh, gimmick infringement. <laughs> Consistency is in- and rounding out the panel, the Punjabi playboy, AJ Singh. I don't know if I'm much of a playboy, but uh, yeah, this is AJ. Good to be here. You know, I always wondered, does uh, does India have like any like um, celebrities you wouldn't think of? I mean, of course, we got your, you know, your Dev Patels, your Frida Pinta, your Fisher Stevens. But do they have, you know, um, the, the uh, who, who's the guy Germany likes? Uh Hitler? Knight Rider? <laughs> <laughs> oh, David Hasselhoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does India have like a David Hasselhoff? Like someone you wouldn't suspect is like a big time like celebrity, but is. Yeah, there's a porn star named Sunny Leone who uh, she's in like, I think she's like Canadian or maybe she lived in America and moved or something like that. But she she became a hit in India. I don't know how big she is. I don't think she's like super main, but she went from like not really being known here at all to being in like music videos and movies over there. So, I mean, that that's one right there <laughs> wow so is, is she like is she indian yeah she's indian. she is i feel like i've heard that name but i i don't think i've ever seen her i'm sure you've seen her. <laughs> <laughs> why <laughs> <laughs> i've definitely heard that name but i mean you see her on posters and billboards oh, right? okay it's when interesting for a place i'm not gonna say you can't really label indios because it's such but i would go even closer okay yeah. uh but I mean, most of India is like fairly conservative, you know, like they're not, they're not like, there is overt sexuality in the music videos and the movies, <laughs> that's pretty obvious, but I mean, they, they try to act like the, that's not something that they're really, you know, trying to uh, commercialize so much. But I mean, there you go. You have a porn star who's, uh, who's made it pretty big over there. It's kind of like, uh, like 1950s America where like people were sexy and they were like still doing their thing, but like, yeah, you couldn't be too overt. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I feel like like porn stars that are famous here, they don't re- usually cross the threshold where they're doing like commercial stuff. Yeah, they're famous for porn and you're like, yeah. yeah. They get pigeonholed yeah. in more than one way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, to start out with, uh, once again, uh, we'd just like to go around. Anybody uh, have an interesting story from the week or did you uh, consume a new TV show, book, or anything of note? Um, well, I just read up on the news a little bit, some interesting stuff. Uh, well, recently, the United States government, the Pentagon, released some information about uh, UFOs. So the, the question is, first of all, what were they talking about when they talk about UFOs? And uh, most of the time, what they're saying, or from what I've read, they're saying, saying that there are unidentified flying objects uh, that they've discovered that they can't figure out uh, where they came from. I'm not going to say it's aliens, and nobody has really said it's aliens, uh, but they are trying to figure out where this technology that seems maybe advanced for uh, our time period uh, established itself from. Maybe it's from another country. Maybe it's somebody else who's just building stuff in their garage or something. It could be anything. But I thought it was interesting that they came out with that. There was a division that was looking into this that was supposed to have been closed down in 2012 but i guess they just renamed it or something and they kept it going and it's still you know operating today and the real question is uh why is this even a thing why do we know about this why do we have to know about this why are they disclosing this information to everybody is there a reason for it uh just wondering yeah i, I actually i saw a headline about this but i didn't have time to like read the article and it, it is yeah i mean it's always interesting but my thing is like, i never understood why I- unless the government you know the ufos were of like you know military crafts like why keep it from the public if they if they really find something that they legitimately think may be from you know uh, you know why not share that with the people are you really concerned that's going to cause some sort of unrest i mean why wouldn't you want to share it? i don't know everything you share with the public china is <laughs> <laughs> these crafts could be from china for all we know <laughs> it's true in which case we might not say it out loud yeah yeah. I mean, I, I've never been 
completely convinced by any of the stories I've heard about UFOs that, you know, any are really alien in, in nature, even though I, you know, I kind of hope they are. It'd be cool. But um, I did, I did, uh, there was like a podcast Joe Rogan did like a year or two ago with a guy from the Air Force. And he was talking about this, you know, story where he was flying in like, I think it was like 2004 or something like that. And like they, they saw this this craft they would try to follow it but then it just took off at like such a speed that off of their radar that he's like we can't make something currently that can go that fast and so it's like it was definitely interesting hearing that podcast and that story and be like hmm, maybe there's something you know yeah i mean there's two sides to it there's one side where you're like is it aliens that'd be interesting you know i wish that was something i could see in my lifetime and there's also the side where it's like well this technology seems like it's advanced you know so where did that come from who's who's doing that you know yeah i mean my guess would be if we've ever been visited by an alien craft it's definitely some sort of artificial intelligence you know rather than an organic you know creature that just seems to make the most sense because like if we were more technology technologically advanced that's what we would do we would send out ai scout ships basically right yeah, well, I think yeah. So. biological meat bags like ourselves aren't very well suited space mm -hmm. so if you make something smarter that perhaps even operates better in outer space why why would he colonize space but i mean also the interesting thing is like i mean it's unlikely maybe not impossible but as far as we know now we think it's very unlikely that they could ever you know make a craft or anything that could go faster than the speed of light right so that would mean if, if we've been visited by some sort of ai technology it's probably from a civilization that um, became intelligent way, way, way earlier than we did, which is interesting. So I read an article uh, about, like along with this article, it was about aliens and uh, I guess the University of Nottingham did a, did a research, they did some study, and they said uh, based on how humans and how life evolved on earth they're they're predicting conservatively that there's 36 alien civilizations in our galaxy so based on the fact that it took billions of years for us to get where we are and how long it took for our planet to be situated the way it is for it to be around the sun that it is all these factors yeah they're they're estimating 36 uh civilizations and i i tend to believe that there is alien life out there i think it's unlikely that there isn't but it's probably so far away and they mentioned that in the article it's probably so far away that you know being able to reach them or anything like that is going to be very difficult so i mean yeah i could see maybe ai and even that would would be very like I would say hard for it to reach us in the in the time span that you would expect it to reach us. Like it wouldn't be in like hundreds of years. It would take thousands, millions, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the the disappointing thing is I I, I think you're right. I think there are most likely is other life out there. It's just yeah, we're so far away that we'll probably never ever know. Yeah, and that's kind of disappointing, you know. Well, I mean, like the nearest star is what thirty. God, I don't know. But anyway, there is like a theoretical way to potentially push something there within, you know, a human lifespan. Sure. But it'd be something the size of maybe a cell phone. But I have heard of theoretical things. that can Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> and I'd be very happy to be wrong in this situation. Well, I mean, there's lots of stars much further away. Mm -hmm. But yeah, potentially. If you say it's like 30 light years, that's... I, mean, I'm, I don't know. I was thinking 36, but then I was thinking I heard... I don't know. I sh this one, sh maybe we should have talked about beforehand and done some research. But yeah. Talk yeah, I mean, I find this stuff like interesting, but I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not like a nasa like science nerd that knows all the you know breaking news and all the like the distance from here to the sun and all that kind of stuff so um well all right um so yeah let's let's kind of get into the show now i actually i have a topic all ready to go but before we get into that i kind of brought just like a, a, a another topic that i figured uh, given the like the state of things would be interesting to, to talk about just off the bat is because we are in the portland area and there's some uh, interesting Interesting stuff going on here um, because it, it's weird because I mean I haven't been in Portland Portland very long less than a year and what you guys count well you guys were in the Vancouver area first and then moved over to Portland but you guys haven't been in this you guys have been in this area what like a couple of years now about a year maybe is it has it been Portland in the Vancouver area we were there for like about two years and then uh, yeah. Portland one year so, so three yeah, years three total years. but anyway like and and we're we're not like right in the like I guess downtown Portland area where like protests and things have been going on so it's, it's one of those things where i knew like right after the george floyd thing happened and they were having the 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 protests like 
like all the other major cities were like I knew they were going on but then I didn't hear about them for a while so I just kind of assumed they stopped but apparently they went on and then I guess because uh Trump you know he made like a uh what is it presidential declaration or whatever I forget what they call Order, it I guess. Yeah, yeah yeah where like um he, he wanted to protect like statues and monuments that were getting damaged so he made this thing to to where you know, if you get caught doing that, supposedly you get 10 years in prison or something like that. But anyway, so when the protests were going around here on like around July 4th, I guess they had like um, sent in a bunch of like federal troops or something to, you know, uh, supposedly help keep the peace and protect monuments or whatever. But that riled up the people even more. And so basically the protests ever since have, have been more about like protest that kind of stuff you know and it got interesting over the last couple of weeks because there were stories of you know unmarked federal agents basically just you know coming in gassing people uh, um, detaining people and from what I heard uh, I mean they're from um, directed from the Department of Homeland Security and like a lot of them were actually work for the Border Patrol but you know they're here and and uh, I guess the fucked up thing about it is like some of the protesters they were dealing with were basically peaceful protesters that weren't rioting and weren't destroying. And so, yeah, I just wanted to see what's, uh, what have you guys heard about it and what are you guys' uh, thoughts on it? Yeah, I heard about one person's account of it. He he said that he was peacefully protesting and he got chased down by some, uh, he, he thought they were right-wing uh, people who had their guns and, you know, they were just maybe out to get protesters. But it turned out they were uh, these federal agents and uh, they chased him down into like an alleyway or something and he just put his hands up he was he was very nervous and like it was like an abduction they picked him up and put him in a van and took him somewhere else uh, i think to like the local jail or something and they they didn't process him i think they just asked him a few questions and then let him go so he was never really arrested or anything but you know the, the fact the way it went down and everything was horrifying and and he, you know he doesn't get any uh paperwork or anything saying like what he did or what you know what this whole thing was about he just got singled out and taken somewhere else like that so i mean from his experience it sounds like it's pretty horrifying pretty bad and uh i saw a picture i think a video of the portland mayor being gassed so i mean yeah, yeah. so i mean they are really and the, the mayor you know he came out and said that nobody was doing anything wrong it was peaceful protesting but still the uh the police you know the or who the federal agents whoever they were they went out of their way and you know actually gassed these people it sounds like they're pretty aggressive out there yeah that one was kind of weird because i, I guess he was was giving like a speech and um, the audience was actually booing him and uh, he tried to join them federal agents somehow like they gassed him or something <laughs> like damn. wasn't there wasn't wasn't there another state where i don't know if it was a senator or governor or, but they got gas i mean i haven't heard of it but i, forgot, I, I believe I it god i just remember brief the fact that the mayor got gassed here tells me that nobody's uh safe yeah and i don't know the fact that the federal government came in nobody really wants it i think and other than i think the first few days it hasn't been really aggressive i don't think it's been a lot more peaceful but on the other hand it's been going on for like two months which what in the hell goes on for two months no but i think that's that's commendable like you know the fact that they believe in something so much that they're willing to come out every day or however many times and, and fight for it and from what I understand, the, the shopkeepers in downtown, they say it's all peaceful. There's been no looting or anything like that. No damage to property. Or, well, you know, that's been some people's experience. I don't know how much. Yeah, I mean, I know, like, the buildings, because I work security, like, we had buildings that were damaged, like, the first okay. couple of days. Mm. And now it's it's been quiet, but. Okay. So, yeah, it, maybe at the beginning there were some uh, rowdy people who uh, got involved and kind of took things into their own hands. But, uh I mean, from what it sounds like, things are escalating because these federal agents are here and they're, you know, they're tear gassing or whatever. They're doing these things that are kind of out of line, you know, they're, they're escalating situation. That's what everybody's reporting, too, that things are yeah. getting uh, more heated now. And there's more tension between the protesters and the police. Yeah, I don't feel like the things were necessarily aggressive enough at this point that it's really warranted. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and why do you guys think of all places the Portland was chosen for these um, federal agents? Because... <laughs> I mean, I mean, if 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 the 
I, I mean, have other cities been having stuff linger this long? Like, it's been a long time. I mean, that, I don't actually know if other cities have been protesting. As, there, there were as a lot much. of protests, but I think Chicago. I think some big but, cities. They're still have, talking about Chicago, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I, here's the thing: Portland is in a liberal state. It's a liberal city. You know, to me, just the way I feel, it seems like they're trying to make an example out. You know, like okay, we're gonna go in there and show them who's boss and and quell everything. And, and do things the way that you know a certain part of the country want but I, I think portland itself it's it's not like a place that's going to ask for the, nobody asked for these federal troops nobody wanted them here they were sent in by somebody who's not in portland you know out in washington dc who's making their own calls so i mean it, i think locally it's been a negative to have these federal troops here and it, it just seems like it's it's not benefiting the locals in this area to to have this whole thing go down the way it is yeah and also like if the excuse for sending the federal agents here is heck monuments and stuff i mean the the big monuments that were being destroyed uh you know in the south were of course the confederate statues and i don't know what they're destroying up here but it's certainly not confederate well there, there's statues, like a, right? a big like city statue of an elk that was because it was downtown it was kind of randomly destroyed and everyone's like what are you doing <laughs> that, that is a weird thing to destroy yeah. <laughs> poor elk yeah. Yeah. yeah what did that elk ever do <laughs> look at the history books guys he's a sympathetic <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that elk was a I bad dude. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, should we move on to our first? Well, I, I was kind of wondering because we're, since we're on the topic, um, you're talking about Floyd a little bit and stuff. And I was kind of wondering, like, what comes to your mind when you guys hear the term like systemic racism? Because policing is about the only thing that comes to my mind, although I think there's some others out there. I think of it in a in a structural sense. Like, I think it comes from top down, you know, like there's rules in place, there's systems in place. It, not necessarily just here. Like, uh, I heard of a story in, a, in the the UK where a an Indian person who was British he was raised there and everything uh, he was trying to become a a lord I think and uh, there was a conversation that one British minister had with another and he was saying that he's not British you know and the other guy luckily you know he actually recorded it outed this person but uh I mean, there's there's sometimes like an unspoken thing, like kind of rules that people will follow that that enforce like systemic racism, even though like it might not be written down anywhere. And that might be an example. Another one where there were rules written down, I think, was like South Africa during apartheid, where everybody had to be open and honest about what's going on and how this is run and how to break it down and rebuild it. But uh I mean, I think systemic racism comes from, yeah, unspoken and spoke rules. And right. Rules. The thing is, like, the apartheid is, is very easy for me to, to see because they did have very set things. And sometimes it's talked about in a, such a general way that I, I struggle with, like, understanding what's going on. Um, I think definitely, like, the policing is pretty obvious because, you know, certain areas, you know, with certain demographics were blatantly attacked, especially with regard to, like, uh, you know, the drug trade and stuff like that. But... When it comes to other things, I'm kind of like me. I mean, I don't know if if you can show me that or not. Sometimes. Well, uh, it's one of those things mm -hmm. where, like, well, in like like you're saying about the drug thing, like definitely like you know uh, Reagan era, like the '80s, like the whole thing about how uh, you know crack cocaine, the way they would um, punish people caught with that rather than people caught with cocaine, mm -hmm. where it's like it's the same drug, but people, uh, but right, you two know, very different standards. Yeah, two very different standards, and of course you know crack was more prevalent in the african-american community but you know with the systemic thing it's one of those things where like we probably don't even know all the ways because you know i'm not gonna say well like i bet like banking for probably easier for you know a white person to get a loan than a black business owner things like well, that well i i mean i've seen those statistics in like um loan departments and like employment statistics and part of me is wondering if all that goes back to you know the uneven jailing situation because a lot of times you can't be prejudiced against someone you know legally for all these reasons with the exception as if you've ever been to prison and then they can be prejudiced as shit so if you take a huge chunk of the population put them in prison you know then all of that other stuff doesn't apply all the rules for racial equality and all this stuff and i'm wondering if instead of those systems actually being racist themselves gets all this backflow from like this other area but i don't know that's just kind of a hypothesis you know, I even wonder, like, down to the level of how communities get, you know, federal funding. Because, like, do you think inner city 
um, public schools are getting the same um, opportunity and amount of, of uh, you know, public funding as, as you know, schools and public schools in more affluent areas, uh, you know, things like that, and which also, you know, it makes a snowball effect. You know, any community that's not being served with a good education, they're going to feel that ramification I, later on. I mean, that's one of those things. It has a lot of components, though. Well, yeah. Because, I mean, if you live in a, a rich suburb or something, they're probably voting for higher taxes for better schools. Yeah. And you know, that's part of their reputation. So anywhere you have money, the children are going to get better education. I mean, that's, you get what you pay for and they're, they're going to pay for it. But those, those areas are hard to get into. But, you know, I think just like you said, I, I, I think starting out with the, the, you know, prison system, it, it, it affects that one alone. Just having so many, you know, African American incarcerated for for like, you know, for many years, like marijuana charges and things like that. Although, luckily, I think marijuana is becoming legal in more and more places. But that one system of inequality if, is going to affect so many others. Right. I think that's like the center, the most vast. Definitely, um, definitely. Yeah. But you know, also the systemic thing. You know, we talk about all these you know, horrendous cases that, is, that have popped up in recent years of, you know, police abuse and, and then nothing, nothing really happens. The, the, to all far too often the the police um, policeman who you know blatantly murders somebody gets away with it or in and, and then a lot of times you know they'll even end up getting you know a, a pension and get off with like uh you know what's it called like almost like a disability pension for the, the yeah. trauma that they yeah through. the trauma yeah. well there's very strong like brotherhood in in like military or police or something and a lot of times, even if there is a gigantic piece of shit, even when it all comes out, they try to protect them because if if you're in charge of a you know a team of police, to some extent, they want you to know that you're going to be there, and so I, I think that is is kind of a really negative situation because they don't go after them like they should. And I think the simplest thing, you know, would generally be just put them in prison and then let the courts sort it out after. Because anytime someone's murdered, it requires you know a certain amount of vigilance. I think. Yeah, I think uh, police unions are very powerful. You know, they're the ones who uh, put in place these rules and systems where if a police officer does do something wrong, they have so many options and so many ways to get out of trouble or or to not face the full consequences that a normal person under those under those under that situation would would face. You know, so it seems like they're very protected. Yeah, and another proposal I've heard, and you know, a lot of cops have body cams, but they like magically get shut off. And yeah, things. but it wouldn't cost that much to force everyone to wear a body cam and just say hey if your body cam's off in one of these critical situations you're done yeah you're fired it, you're, mm -hmm. it's as simple as that you're done but then I, they would probably just say oh mine must have been malfunctioning i definitely had it on yep sorry you're fired <laughs> yeah. you do but, your equipment checks but yeah and and like i don't want to say that all the protests that always inevitably happen after these tragedies are useless i mean i think you know of course i i disagree with the violent rioting and defacing of statues and everything but like you know for all i know in some of these communities you know maybe things have gotten better there maybe they're protesting and at least in those community communities have caused you know changes to their local you know police regulations and how they hire policemen and all that kind of stuff i have no idea but um but yeah you can definitely see where when police get away with this time and time again um that's that's when the problem you know, really stack up and you see a systemic problem. But yeah, I, I think generally when you talk about systemic racism, it, it all comes from the prison system and the policing is, is kind of affects everything branching outward. I agree. Well, that was a hilarious <laughs> topic. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird when it's like a darker subject and it's just like, well, um, but no, that's it. And that, now for something completely yeah, different. No, it's a, you know, it's a conversational show, so that's, that's yeah. definitely going to happen. Uh, AJ, you got a, a sillier topic to bring us back up? <laughs> Let's see. What if I I do. Oh, I do. Okay. Um, a man in New Jersey tried to, uh, well, he, he got caught, uh, I think, burglarizing or stealing cars. Okay. And uh, he was facing, facing a prison sentence. And he almost got out of it by faking his own death. He forged a uh, death certificate. And what happened was he, he turned it in and the people who were supposed to look at it, they were looking at it, they were checking it over. And they noticed the font was, there were like two different font sizes and uh, the word registry was spelled wrong. So they called into the New Jersey department that handles this and has this information. And uh, it, it, they uncovered the fact that this was a fake death certificate and the guy got caught. So he's facing actually four more years on top of everything that he's already facing <laughs> but yeah if he had just learned to spell and uh 
uh, kept his font size as a uh, uniform, he would have gotten away with it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's, I've, I've wondered sometimes how hard it is to forge some of those things. And part of me is also like, in the 1950s, like if you knew the paperwork, you could probably fake anything. Oh, yeah. Because, like, nobody's talking to each other. It's just, like, a hodgepodge. Like, oh, I guess this is true. Time to move on to something more important. You know? <laughs> I guess he's dead. <laughs> you know, I want to say there was a, also, like, a story a couple years ago in the news where, like, some rich white guy tried to fake his death and got caught doing it. And I forget what the reason was, but I wish I... Re yeah, because I don't know if he was, like, trying to get out of a divorce or what he was. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't opt for real death? <laughs> <laughs> that's where he's like went. i guess I was, fuck, i'm done man. <laughs> that's where I'm he done. went wrong <laughs> yeah that's, <laughs> that's the hard way man <laughs> <laughs> all right so i i came with a, a more prepared topic this week so i like this topic because it uh, uh it lets me talk about kind of a lot of news stories that have happened over the last month or so all kind of related around the same uh topic so basically as i talked about last week uh, you know I said, you know, all of us um, socially are, are left of center, but I think we all, um, you know, don't like when the far left um, either tries to do things we would consider censorship or maybe just get too politically correct about certain things. And so I've noticed there's several stories over the last couple of months um, in entertainment um, that I thought we'd just go through and kind of give our opinions on them if we think maybe the thing people are being too PC about it or what or whatnot. So I have several of them lined up here. So the first one here is um, um, now, <laughs> I think we're all pretty nerdy here. I know, uh, AJ, you and I, we both kind of watch a lot of those um, CW yeah. superhero shows, and we watched The Flash, and there was a story... Is this going to be about whether or not they, they suck? Because <laughs> they don't. <laughs> <laughs> the, Flash, the Flash is the better one of, of those shows. Yeah, it is. Anyway... I could think of a less PC version of The Flash. It'd be funner. <laughs> <laughs> the Flasher. <laughs> that probably exists. Uh, Rule 34, yeah. Anyway, uh, there's an actor on the show, uh, or there was, named Hartley Sawyer. He plays the elongated man on the show. Nice. Um, but he that was... That also fits into my show. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Um, but he was uh, recently fired from the show over some tweets they uncovered. Now, most of these tweets are back in like 2014, I want to say 2012. So they're, they're older tweets. And like, I'm not going to say that some of these aren't like crass tweets or like in bad taste, but I'm reading these and I'm like, I don't know if any of these are bad enough, especially since, you know, they were many years ago, you know, should warrant this guy getting fired but i want to take you through some of these and see what you got so uh one of them okay the saddest part about someone committing suicide is that they will never listen to david bowie again now is that even a really offensive tweet you think i think it's just a bad joke probably that's what it sounds like to me yeah what's the uh What's the accusation? I guess that he talked about suicide in a flippant way. I don't know. So so here's another one. Um, this one just says, date rape myself so I don't have to masturbate. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, again, again, this again little, it, seems uh, like, it seems like he's going for a little ethereal. It seems like he's going for a joke that just doesn't land. Yeah. Okay, this one. Super Bowl exclamation point exclamation mark america exclamation mark 80 percent of the prison population is african-american Ex exclamation point so like that one just seems like he's almost bringing light to what we were just talking about yeah. like the, you know that one to me doesn't seem bad it just seems it seems weird the way he's phrasing it but is he black no no he is no. a white man because then you could say it was racist. <laughs> I guess you, they probably wouldn't have fired a black. Now, this next one, I can see why it would be more um, controversial. All right, let's bring it. But this one was way back in uh, February of 2009. He's responding to a guy, and he says, Just kidding. I don't care, and fags are fine, but sports often make me snore. So, you know, he uses a, a bad word, I'll admit that. But it's just like we were talking about last week when I was like, you know, if I had a Twitter account when I was much younger, I would have been saying, you know, gay is a pejorative all the time. Right. And, and, and like, I mean, I'm on the same boat as this guy. I mean, I'd rather hang out with a boatload of fags than, a, than a, you know, Seahawks fans or something. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're trying to kill our gay audience. <laughs> no, just kidding. That's the same boat. Uh, yeah, I mean. Nah, I uh, just pissing off Seahawks fans. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know for it was no 2009. I can't, I can't just 
pin this down on this guy and say that that's who he is you know like uh i've said plenty of bad things in my past you know that's not who i am anymore so i mean for me it's easy to say that okay uh, maybe he first of all I, I don't know how he said that like how he meant to say it what he right. felt when he was saying it you right know? Cause he was saying they're fine so is he like trying to stand up for them and say like yeah you know i support you know people say queer these yeah, days that's true and you know i figure that's that's kind of like taking power of the word so i don't know but uh yeah i can't i can't pin his his thoughts from 2009 on him now yeah it's hard to say what his intent was then mm -hmm. um okay this one out at a out at dinner and just exposed myself as a racist again <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, it sounds like he's taking shots at himself there. Yeah. Um, okay, now this, I mean, this one I could I could see where it would upset women and it, it may be a little sexist, but at the same time, it's just like he say, he says, I think I could work in a, a tit factory and be pretty happy. <laughs> so like, <laughs> so like a hooter. Thing I don't, <laughs> but it's one of those things where like I can see why it's upset would upset women. But There's no context. I mean, there, <laughs> I mean, he's a guy. Like, of course, he's going to say something like this. Okay, the next one. The only thing uh, stopping me from doing mildly racist tweets is the knowledge that Al Sharpton would never stop uh, complaining about me. <laughs> well, I mean, his tweet from earlier where he talks about black people in jail and the Super Bowl and everything, it makes him sound like he's, like, open-minded. Right, and... right. Um, let's see. Okay, again, this one is one of those ones where he's going for, like, a controversial joke and it just doesn't really work. Um, if I had a wife, I would beat the hell out of her tonight. LOL. Like, he, he sounds like he's trying for a joke there. <laughs> That's but... a terrible joke. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just a bad joke. You, but... got, you got nowhere to run on that one. Yeah. Um, okay, here Here's another uh, sexist one. This one I would say, uh, because of the context, is probably a little worse than the Tit Factory one, but he said, Enjoyed a secret boob viewing at an audition today. I mean... Again, it's one of those, I can see why women wouldn't like that tweet, but is it really that, you know, beyond the pale? I don't know. Again, there's no, like, context, I guess. Uh, yeah. It's, it's like, were you looking through a hole in the wall, or was someone, like, flashing? <laughs> yeah, like, was it part of the audition? <laughs> and then the last one I see here is kind of in the same vein of, he, he looks like he's going for some sort of joke, and it just doesn't really land. But he says, as a lad, one of my favorite activities was kidnapping homeless women and cutting off their breasts. That is a bad, yeah, that's, bad a, that's a terrible yeah. joke. That's like... That's that's the the most fireable one so yeah, far. Yeah, that one probably got him in trouble there. Yeah, you're like, oh, okay. Now all these, uh, you know tendencies i suspected you of uh, i'm ready to ship you down the road right now. now this is the one thing we don't know like like on the surface like so that's the last one i see here of these ones that are included so do you think any of those are, are taken as a whole do you think those are uh you know beyond the pale where this guy had to lose his job where he they, they just and and again i think i think most of these were back in like 2014 2012 that area i mean it was pretty mild to you're like oh i'm gonna go kidnap some homeless chicks and cut off their tits like what but again do you think he was really yeah i don't i don't think that's fireable i think that i don't know what state of mind he was in when he said that i don't know you know what the situation i, I was. think he was kind of going for like a, a shocking like anthony jeselnik type of humor but just failed i, I mean was it like commented to something was there there's just like no i don't think so no i mean I, that's just like i mean it, i'm not saying it's not weird but i I don't get the sense that he's like advocating for violence against women in a serious way or anything like that. Yeah. I don't know. That's like, a, that's a red flag for me on that one. Now, the one thing we don't know is like, you know, maybe this guy behind the scenes was a real asshole and they just wanted to get rid of him. So when these came up, they're like, okay, we got it. <laughs> yeah. We got your number now. But if this guy was like a legitimately like good guy and a good part of the cast, like, I think it's ridiculous that they would fire him over these uh, tweets. Yeah, I don't I think so. None of them to me seem, especially, and, and he put out like a, a, you know, apology himself, you know, and everything after this happened. But and, the fact that they're you know several most of them are several years ago and and just none of them are they're weird but they're not none of them are just to me beyond the pale to the point where you okay so next story and you know the fact that he's he's in an elevated position on a show where he has more responsibility with the public i mean that could have changed him you know maybe he behaved differently and carried himself differently it sounds like he wasn't doing that anymore that was something that he did before so i mean he took his I think he took his position, his fame seriously and tried to, you know, not have a negative impact. So I, I don't think that he should have been fired for that then. All right. My next story is about HBO Max. Um, 
So this story was published on June 10th. You guys probably heard about this. Is HBO Max uh, for a time pulled Gone with the Wind from their streaming service. Um, basically, let's see if I can see the quote here. Of, um, they put a statement. These racist depictions were wrong then and were wrong today, of course. And we felt that to keep this title up without an explanation explanation and a denouncement of those depictions would be irresponsible. Um, spokesperson added that when the film return, returns to HBO Max, it will return with a discussion of its historical context and denouncement of those very depictions. And so then there's another um, related story uh, basically going over that. So this next one was published on June 24th and they, they say they brought back the movie with a four and a half minute introduction by African American Turner Classic Movies host Jacqueline Stewart who discusses its history and its racism. So uh, I mean, my first question is, so I think they kind of pulled it in the midst of the whole George Floyd thing, saying it just, I don't know, was uh, kind of in bad taste for them to have a movie that has, you know, depictions of, of slavery and racism at the time. But... Uh, I've always felt like that kind of thing on the surface is, is silly anyways. Like, are we all babies? Can we not understand that, you know, there's coincidence and things like that? Or, or I don't know, what do you guys think in general of these kind of things um, being pulled because of, you know, sensitive tie-in? Uh, as an adult, I feel like I can make up my own mind and know, like, what's wrong with the movie. What the race is, I mean, slavery is bad. I know that. But, I mean, maybe for children, maybe for viewers who don't have any kind of a understanding of the situation maybe they need to have it explained to them like this is a bad thing and all this stuff so i mean i'm I, i'm not a, against it but for me I, I don't think it's necessary for me but maybe maybe it is necessary for some viewers yeah i mean in general i don't believe in censorship basically at all <laughs> that's, a, that's not a lot to add to that yeah i mean i'm 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 okay if they want to put you know, these disclaimers on, even though I think it's silly. You know, I actually, I brought up here because I thought one of the uh, places that did it better was, you know, back in the day, like, I don't know, probably about I don't know, 15 years ago at this point, I, I, um, I'm a Looney Tunes fan. So before they had them streaming, I went ahead and ordered some of the DVD sets of, uh, Looney Tunes. And there, there are a few like racist. Yeah. There's uh, definitely some racist stuff in there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so, like there's some, uh, Frank Tashlin, Porky Pig tart cartoons, <laughs> really bad. In, but, uh, they basically on the, those DVD sets, um, put up this disclaimer. It says the cartoons you're about to see are products of their time. They may depict some of the ethnic and racial prejudice that were commonplace in American society. Depictions were wrong then and are wrong today. While the following does not represent the Warner Brothers view of today's society, these cartoons are being presented as they were originally created because to do otherwise would be the same as claiming these prejudices never existed. And it's that last sentence that I really like. Is like, we acknowledge that, you know, there's some messed up stuff in here, but ignoring it seems like the worst thing to do. And to me, I would rather companies put a label like this this on things and just leave them in their original format you know if anything uh, that seems to me the like i think disney straight up should do this with like song of the south like even though it has things in there people hate like just show it put a disclaimer like this on there and be like hey this does have some some bad depictions in it um but ignoring those you know would be claiming that those never existed. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, uh, that that sounds like a good thing to do. It sounds like, uh, you know, not ig not ignoring the past, not actually dealing with it and understanding what it was and trying to maybe just e explain the fact that, hey, this was a bad time, you know, for equality and stuff like that. I think, I mean, that makes sense. Uh, getting rid of it, if if you want to show it to a younger audience that, that maybe is sensitive to those things, I, I don't know. I, I'm on the fence. I could go either way to be honest like you could just completely wipe it out and get rid of it and give it to a young audience and let them enjoy the what they're watching or you could tell them that hey this is something that you know during that time period was something that people had to deal with i think uh young people today don't want to deal with that stuff they don't want to face like the negatives of the past and and uh they're more likely to want to shut it off and get away from it so uh, i think that 
it might not be a successful tactic, but I mean, it might be a way to bring uh, education about right. what's been happening. Right. So not necessarily deleting history, but I mean, as a company, you can definitely see why they wouldn't want to put it out there. I mean, they've got this gigantic website with a huge amount of content and pretty much adults let their kids roam free on there. They can't compromise that. I mean, it's a billion dollar industry. You don't, you don't want to look that horse in the mouth. So I can definitely understand them not wanting to openly put it out there, but uh, it's their content. I think that's, uh, that's their decision and, and that's theirs to make. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, I mean, uh, I just, I, well, uh what I'm getting at is, I guess I, I like I like this putting things on there and just having a disclaimer better than this next story, which is HBO Max. And, and I don't want to necessarily just single them out on here because it looks like um, Hulu and Comedy Central have done this in the past as well. But um, uh, HBO Max now has the streaming rights for South Park, but there's five episodes that they have totally pulled. And, and like I said, I guess Hulu did this when they had it and Comedy Central when they had it as well. The, there's five episodes... Of, with the prophet Muhammad, you remember those episodes? Um, so apparently you just, they're off of there. You can't see them. And you know, my thing is why can't you, um, do the same on those? Say like have a disclaimer that says, Hey, this, <laughs> well, I mean, you definitely can, but it, at, at the end of the day, it's still their brand. And if they've bought the rights to it, they can do whatever they want with it. And if they think for some reason it's going to harm their brand, they don't want to, I, I think that's their right at the end of the day. I mean, I'm not saying it's not their right, but it is censorship. I mean, I, I'm surprised. Inherently, I wouldn't think you know Stone and Parker would be up for that, just because that's essentially exactly what they address in those <laughs> those issues. Right, right. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, if they sold the rights, then that's it. And that is it. Okay, next story. Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben's rooted in racist imagery to change. So this was another thing that came up that a lot of people didn't like. And apparently, I, um, so I'll just read a little bit of this article. Um, uh, PepsiCo Inc. Um, that sells Aunt Jemima products said it would retire the brand because of its origins and racist imagery of black people. Hours later, Mars Inc. said it would change its Uncle Ben's brand. And two more big food companies said they would review the packaging long used by Cream of Wheat and Mrs. Butterworth uh, product. Um so yeah, and what do you guys think about this? Because I mean, Aunt Jemima is based, I think, on like a uh, a slave type character. Yeah, it's like a hundred years old or something crazy, right? Yeah, um, I think it is in here some in this article somewhere. But um, but yeah, do you guys think that these brands should should uh, change their names, or what do you think? I mean, I'm pretty cold hard hearted about it. I'm like, <laughs> you know, whatever they think is going to affect the bottom line the most. That's what I think they should do. But like, I have this coworker, and I I've told you about him. He's a little goofy, but um, he was very adamant on this, particularly the Aunt Jemima. Like, I listened to him for probably 10, 20 minutes, more than once. But just really does not want the world changing. Like, he doesn't like the world changing around me. You can sense this about him. You know, like <laughs> it's been good enough for 100 years. I grew up with it. Like, why are you taking this? bottle of syrup out of my life you know <laughs> and he's like i better go out and buy one now so i can put it on the shelf because you know it's gonna be a collector's item and this stuff well you know he's uh he's got his views <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think uh you know it's based on everybody's like you said their own views about it yeah me i i I did see Aunt Jemima as a kind of, what are they called, mammy character? Yeah, she's like a mammy. Yeah, so, I mean, she seemed kind of outdated, so I, I'm not a, I'm not against changing that if they want yeah. to. But I, I didn't know Uncle Ben's was, you know, something like that. I didn't know Mrs. Buttersworth was like that. So, I mean, to me, it's not, I never even yeah. correlated that to, like, being racist or anything. But, I mean, if there's people out there who do feel that way, who are offended by it, then, um, you know, I mean, yeah, I guess. I it, mean, at the end of the day, you vote with your dollars right you're like that's racist i'm not gonna buy it yeah and then someone else can buy it but i've heard that they're just gonna bring her back as like a black auntie or something so i don't know <laughs> that could i have there's part of this article that says the history of uncle ben's uh dates back to a texas rice broker who created a company to market a new parboiled rice he called uncle ben's plantation rice in mm. 1937 when, when did they lose the plantation um <laughs> <laughs> During World War II, the broker formed a partnership with businessman Forrest Mars to sell the rice to the U.S. Army. In 1947, the company officially introduced Uncle Ben's converted rice. The packaging showed a white-haired man with a black bow tie. Mr. Mars changed the name of the company from Converted Rice Inc. to Uncle Ben's Inc. and later combined it with his family's candy business. 
<laughs> but yeah, changing it from plantation rice was probably a, yeah. a good, good call. He, he was he was a, ahead of the wave on that one. I know plantation food was that coveted. Yeah, <laughs> it says uh, the Aunt Jemima brand back dates back to 1889. It was inspired by a popular song, "Old Aunt Jemima," typically performed in minstrel shows by a white man in blackface. You don't have a copy of that song, do you? <laughs> I do not. Yeah, that one, I guess, uh, definitely. Feel free to change. <laughs> you want me to um, track that down and make it be the intro song to the show? Yeah, that's, we need something. I mean, that's got to be uh, in the public domain, right? <laughs> I would suspect, yeah. Um, so we talked about, um, I talked about earlier that disclaimer on the, the Looney Tunes cartoons. But speaking of Looney Tunes, they've also been in the news, which is they announced that, because um, HBO... Um, they have made um, a new um, new Looney Tunes, which I'm actually excited to see. I haven't got HBO Max yet, but when I do, I will be checking uh, those out. But they announced with these new cartoons, they are not uh, going to have guns anymore. The Elmer Fudd, Yosemite Sam, they, no guns. They got to find a different way. And so this one, I, I, I find silly just in that. Um, so I think, I mean, again, I don't have HBO Max yet, but I think the, the original Looney Tunes are showing they're showing you know just like they were with the guns and things but like they're they're, they're still going to be hurting you know each other with dynamite probably in pots and pans at least so like well i think also in some ways like if, if you want to poke fun at you know backwater america guns are a good starting place yeah <laughs> you know the whole america yeah the, i mean if you look at the, that's one of the things about yosemite sam and the older cartoons is he's, he's so over the top <laughs> right <laughs> that, you, that you look at him and you laugh because you know there's people out there that are that way well right he's just an over the top character and that's part of what was great about him was just you know character yes yes and the uh, kind of the human insight i think and so uh, they don't really go into at least this article I'm reading here as to why they did it. My, my guess is someone's going to say, like they have with kids' cartoons in the past, well, we don't want kids, you know, picking up a gun and shooting another kid. But it's <laughs> it's like Looney Tunes are so violent in other ways that like, are, have, is there an epidemic? Demic of like you know kids hitting other kids with you know <laughs> sticks of dynamite and, and and anvils. I mean I don't know. It seems a bit. I, I mean kids in violent cartoons they just kind of go together. I yeah, think. Like, yeah. It's a good fit. And, and I mean the thing is is like any credible study that's ever been done um, shows that there's no statistical um, significant uh, you know correlation or causation between the consumption of violent media. Um, you know whether that be you know movie. TV, music, video games, and, you know, uh, committing violent acts. So, like, why do we um, think it's any different when it comes to kids? I don't know. Yeah, and I don't know if I'm even excited about it, really, because pretty much every time something gets remade like that, if they're coming from a, from a political standpoint, it's almost always garbage. And, I mean, HBO has pretty good reputation, but I, I just don't see it. Yeah, I'm interested to see them, but I, I'm, I'm skeptical that they'll be anywhere as funny as the original ones. But, uh, AJ, what do you think about uh, this story uh, i was never really a big looney tunes person in the first place but i feel like i mean taking out guns what are they gonna put in like bow and arrows or something it's still <laughs> gonna probably be something violent so yeah i don't know yeah i think they're just replacing one thing with another and you'll still come out with like a similar outcome so <laughs> I, I mean if you go back and look at like mickey mouse like in the beginning he was pretty you know there was an element of violence there and there's but he's also kind of heroic he had kind of like good and bad qualities almost but he was kind of like a rascal and like over the years they kind of really took all of that away from him and now he's just kind of like a laughing idiot that I don't know no one really wants to watch except, except maybe little kids yeah. but I always felt the best cartoons were for adults and kids and kind of hid the adult stuff and kids don't necessarily realize it but I don't know that's my personal opinion well um so my last story on this topic and I, of all the topics I've done today this is actually one that I could maybe get behind a little more my, my thing with this story because this one's gone on for a long time is i don't feel like i really have a a, a big dog in the fight simply because um well it, it's the whole washington redskin um scandal that's been going on you know for years and my thing is like number one i'm not a football fan so i don't really care from that side of things and, and then my thing has been i have never really known how the um native american population as a whole you know really thinks about the term redskin because it doesn't 
doesn't never seem to be you know unanimous or at least not from what I heard. Um, but apparently they they are going to change it. So it says for right now, and this might just be a placeholder. But for right now, they've changed to just the Washington Football Team. Oh, yeah, which... not like the Savages or something. <laughs> <laughs> like wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I think instead of them changing to a more PC name, all the other teams should just change to races. <laughs> so you could have like the New York Honkies and like the, <laughs> the, the Boston Mix and the <laughs> Pennsylvania Wops. Or, you know, just make everybody a racist team. <laughs> and that's more, uh, <laughs> more even. But uh, you might increase your sales. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but you'd, yeah, you'd have more interesting games. But I will say, yeah, out of all these stories, this one is the one I'm like okay with because, um, again, not being a football fan, it's never really been in my purview. But you know, if if um, the general consensus among among uh, Native Americans is you know this is fucked up and and we do want it to change, then I'm all for it changing. Uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, I'm on board with that. Like, uh, if somebody changed, I, I'm a big supporter of the Houston Rock and uh, life. Long, but if they had to change the name because it was offensive, and you know it's it's not, but if the, if it was how, somehow offensive to somebody, then you know instead of every time there's a game and they have to see that and relive whatever negative emotions they have to live, I'd rather just change it one time and get it over with. Any uh, thoughts? I, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I'm whatever they want to do. Like I say, people vote with their money if they're not, you know, if it's not worth it for you to be putting up with that all the time, then, then change your name, absolutely. Or if you're that rooted in, then leave it the same and, you know, let your sales plummet or whatever happen. Um, good old uh, Donald Trump did put out his thoughts on it in a, in a, in a tweet. Uh, he's <laughs> <laughs> the, the last red skin. <laughs> he says, he says, Born skin. Yeah, the, um, they named teams out of strength, capital letters, not weakness. But now the Washington Redskins and Cleveland Indians, two fabled sports franchises look like they are going to be changing uh, their names in order to be politically correct. Indians like Elizabeth Warren must be oh. very angry right now. <laughs> so he's still, he's still on that Pocahontas train. <laughs> he went the other way. He said, Indians are offended by this. <laughs> you would think this would be to not. Yeah, that's the other weird thing. It's like, I don't think he... he it's quite... a little backhanded, buddy. <laughs> All right, so that was my uh, very long topic. Uh, AJ, you got any more uh, good ones there? I do. I don't know if they're good ones, but... Uh, so... China and the U.S. They they've they've been having so much tension lately. Uh, recently, the U.S. closed down a Chinese consulate in Houston for spying, and uh, I think the Chinese they were like out there burning documents for a couple days or for for a long time, <laughs> making sure that they got rid of every right. all the evidence <laughs> before uh, people got in there and saw what was going on. And then the Chinese did the same thing. They closed down a U.S. consulate in China in Chengdu uh, because uh, the same thing. I, I guess spying or whatever, or some sort of retribution. And, I mean, you think about what's happening in the South China Sea, the tensions between uh, America's allies, the U.S. itself uh, against China, how the U.S. recently sent two aircraft carriers into the region to show kind of like a show of strength and solidarity with its allies. Um, China recently had a friction with India and, uh, you know, people died. There was a, you know, border conflict and it's still kind of going on because it's not over yet. They're still uh, unclear about where the border is and stuff. And China and the U.S. has been on India side in that sense too so i mean what you're seeing is kind of like uh the Ch the chinese have this philosophy about encirclement and they even play board games where you try to encircle each other and that's how you claim victory and when they when they had russia uh, on their border and you know they were encircled by russia 50 60 70 years ago uh they went to the u.s for help well now they're starting to be encircled by the u.s and you're seeing all this tension between the u.s and china as to how to deal with that China has been very vocal about supporting Iran in this time where the U.S. has put heavy sanctions on them. Uh, they've been supporting, you know, enemies of the U.S. So it, it just leads me to believe that there's tension, that there's there's conflict, and what does it look like when that blows over? Is it is it going to be World War Three? I don't think there's going to be World War Three, but I do think there's going to be some sort of warfare that's new. You know, that that's a uh, 
like already you've seen ships and uh, being sunk in the South China Sea. They don't explain that there was some sort of tension between the U.S. and China, and that's why it happened. Sometimes they just say that, oh, sailors died, a ship, you know, something happened on the ship and it exploded or whatever, or it sank. But I'm starting to think that there is like a proxy war going on between the two countries. And when it escalates, what's that going to look like? Yeah, it's definitely scary. You know, I, I, I honestly, I, I worry more about like uh, uh, economic war than uh, physical war when it comes to China, even even though both would be uh, scary. And I guess, you know, physical war would be scarier, but I think that's the less likely road. I think, I think they more or less are going to go after us economically mm -hmm. like they've been doing. I mean, economically speaking, I, I essentially think America is bankrupt. So there's going to come a day when we just have to say, sorry, we can't pay you. What, what do they do with that? Because we owe them a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do we do at that point? I mean, we still have a gigantic arm. We have still, we have, it's not like we're defense, but I, I think our ability to pay them back is going to crap out at some point. And then there's probably going to be some kind of struggle for who has the net or the world currency, basically. Because right now it's the U.S., but somebody, oh, something's got to pick it up. Yeah, I mean, what, uh, I mean, doesn't our... I mean, China's it, already made some plays in that direction. If we ever take that step and we're like, oh, you know what, we just, we can't pay you back, we're done. Yeah. Like... Our our currency collapses, right? Uh, probably. So I don't know. That's that's a doomsday scenario. Hopefully that doesn't come. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it seems like China is the new big player. You know, it seems like we're we're destined to be outdated and kind of what Britain is today in a in a lesser role. Yeah, maybe it's. I, I mean, all there's a number of us that are going to be big countries, probably just because of our resources and size. And I don't know if I see a full on war or not, but yeah, definitely there's there's some kind of change coming. But it, it's really hard to see what's going to be on the other side. I think. Of course, but China is definitely shows like it seems like they show overt aggression to everyone in their proximity. Of course, maybe a even worse pandemic will come along and screw our economy up without them having to do anything. Who knows? I mean, I'm sure they. Had, I'm sure those weapons are around too but oh yeah probably um wow yeah <laughs> we're really going to do with these topics today <laughs> let's see let's see if we got a more so a uh, lo little different so i've noticed like both of you have like some kind of phobia about public toilets yeah i do <laughs> like what's I, going on here uh, i you, you know, well, one thing is like... Like, you'll risk shitting your pants. Yeah, I really I, I really don't like... I mean, for one thing, I have a very shy bladder. So, like, I will sometimes go in a public bathroom really having to piss. And I'll just... <laughs> And this is one of the reasons, like, even if I'm pissing, I want a stall because I will sometimes just be there for minutes and minutes and be like, fuck, I can't go. Like, it's too noisy in here. <laughs> Have you ever, ever had to do your analysis? What? No. For like a job? Uh, oh, no. That would be really hard for me too. No. Uh, where like some guy has to stand there. Yeah, that I don't think I could. I better not. <laughs> I better never do a job where I have to get drug tested. <laughs> well, it's not about a shy bladder for me. It's just I. I'm, I think it's too dirty. It's gross. It's just not a place where I want to share, you know, a toilet seat with other people. Well, I, I mean, there's definitely an element of that I think with everybody. But I feel like I can go into a toilet and look at it and be like, this is clean enough for me to take a shit. No. I mean, don't get me wrong. If if like I'm really gonna have like shit my pants, I'm, I'm definitely gonna go in the public bathroom. But like usually, um, you know, luckily, usually, even if I have to shit, it's one that I can hold back <laughs> till I get home to get to my base. But um, I don't even try. I'm like, oh, there's a hint. I, you know, I gotta, I gotta take a shit. <laughs> oh, I would hold. It. I remember coming home from school. Yeah, and, same. Like I could see my house, but my <laughs> body would just be like, oh, it's coming out. You know, I fight it and barely get to the toilet in time. <laughs> but that's how far I would go to not use a public restroom. Yeah, you are brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am very averse to it. I, I I only use public bathrooms when I um, absolutely have to. Like I'm not shy. Like I'll flush it with my foot, put the seat over with my foot, do a hover shit. <laughs> like I'll go over to the women's restroom. Like if if I need shit, like it's gonna happen. Like I'm, I'm gonna go take care of this somehow. I mean, I would have if, <laughs> if, if I had, uh, you know, um, pancakes on a day, I should have, <laughs> and uh, and uh, for, troubles are brewing. You know, I uh, yes, I will go in there and I'll I will do what I have to do. But otherwise, I I avoid it if I yeah, same here. 
<laughs> but uh, glad to know there's another sensible yeah. person. Can, can, can they call it? <laughs> so uh, I was reading today uh, the news about. Uh, I came across how lions. The reason that they have manes is to protect their neck. So if they're yeah, attacked, yeah. yeah. And uh, apparently they did some research on why men have beards, and it's a similar reason. It's to protect your face from when you get punched or kicked. So, so why do just men have this? Is this because the women are like fucking us up? Like, yeah, I guess women aren't really beating. Are they just up. not as important in the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, evolution? That doesn't make sense. I guess they're just not as violent. It's got to be to protect us from women, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but like, do you think if you get punched and you have a, a beard versus getting punched and you're clean shaven, like you you think it really like hurts less? It's like one of those cartoons. You got another fist under your beard. <laughs> <laughs> well they did some research they they put like lambskin and like their fur on these uh f- like faces and they they dropped like heavy objects and the ones that had the fur were uh were only damaged 40 45 percent of the time whereas the other ones were damaged 95 percent of the time hmm. so it, it did make a difference might have to grow my hair back <laughs> yeah <laughs> you have to get those chops back <laughs> that was my favorite look by far <laughs> imagine a boxer with a big old full beard you know you don't see that. Man, you've got like those god beard powers. You you could like <laughs> you could grow something, man. Oh yeah, I can get a thick thick beard <laughs> i know you're you're lucky man i like i even because i've been shaving for you know quite a few years like shaving daily and like um it was like last summer like i decided to um grow mine out a little bit again and like it still comes in shitty and like especially <laughs> the mustache my mustache comes in all wispy and shitty right you had like the amish chin strap for a while yes yes i <laughs> I basically looked Amish because I I grew such a shitty mustache that it almost just looked like I had the chin strap. (laughs) Which if if I could, like, I would... The chops were hilarious, though, dude. I did have the chops. This is Portland. You could do chops. Yeah. I I could, but no. (laughs) (laughs) But if if I could grow, like, I would love to have, like, one of those, like, old-timey boxer mustaches that, like, curls on the end. I I can do that a little bit, but I need some, like, mustache wax. (laughs) Like, it's long enough. Or, like, just, like, a solid, like, Tom Selleck mustache. Uh, That'd be great. Yeah, Tom Selleck. Fuck. Sam Elliott. Yeah, he's got a big old mustache. Uh, What's the uh, old boy in Guardian? Kurt Russell. Oh, Oh, yeah. yeah. That son of a bitch can grow a mustache. Oh, yeah. Hateful Lady had that big old thing. Um, mm. That would be yeah. If I could grow a mustache like that, I I totally would. Yeah, you pretty much have to at that point. <laughs> It'd be irresponsible not to. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Well, any anything else? Any other topics before we call it a day? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, a California woman. I don't know if you guys ever had such vivid dreams, but this woman had a dream that she was on like a, a subway or somewhere with her hus- with her fiance, and she was about to be raw so she took her 2.4 carat ring and stuffed it in her mouth and then swallowed in her dream i got a perfect story for this go keep going and then in real life she had done the same thing she she had done that she swallowed her ring and she woke up later realizing that that's what she had done so (laughs) there's just a picture of her in a hospital bed later on i guess they were getting the ring out of her but i mean (laughs) come on who like how do you do that (laughs) so we're gonna oil field i'd be out for a month or two and i worked with this one crazy son of a bitch i got a lot of stories about this guy but he shows up on the job and he's going around for like a couple days like he's like man my stomach hurts he's like he's complaining about pains and stuff and it finally comes out that he got in this big fight with his stripper girlfriend and like she's just as crazy as he are they have one of these like you know they feed off each other's craziness or whatever but they get in this big ass fight takes his five thousand dollar diamond ring and swallows it (laughs) and so like he's walking around in pain with this thing so one day he he takes it off i i watch his shift he goes to the doctor he comes back and he's got a picture of his x-ray and sure as shit right here in like his upper intestine there's fucking spot on diamond ring right right (laughs) in his x-ray and they're like man they, they told me i'm just gonna have to pass it so for like a few days he's just going around and he takes a plastic bag with him to the bathroom and he's shitting in this bag and then you take the bag and he goes outside and he squishes up the turd oh. <laughs> looking for this ring. <laughs> and so eventually he finds it and he washes it up and when he goes back, he gives it back to her. Oh. <laughs> 
that guy was great. He had, uh, all those stories about that guy. He was he was like a complete one. He like he's like one of these charming sociopath guys. Oh, okay. And he was funny and he was charming and he he was a laugh. But yeah, he's just crazy as shit. That reminds me. I, I was listening to this podcast a while ago and like somebody like one of their fans posed the question of like, okay, like one shit a month you take has a diamond buried in it that's probably worth like you know, um, $3,000 or something like that. Do you sort through every one of your shits each month to try to get those diamonds? I mean, I'd probably do like a gold pan one of them sluice boxes. I'll just be like, <laughs> I'll just throw it in there. And the end of the month, I turn on the water and like, shh. That's true. There's got to be like a Yeah, you, you need a system, right? <laughs> For 3000 bucks. I, I mean, if I had to, I'd fucking pick through it with my teeth. <laughs> You know, for 3000 bucks, but there's probably a better way, right? Yeah, I'd, I'd go for it. I mean, even like a couple hundred bucks. That's like a golden turd nugget. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that great note, any, any other... You, man, you really brought uh, several topics today. Any Anything else? Or you want to save those for next week? We'll save it. Okay, okay. Um, all right, well... Um, so first of all, um, uh, I tried to get both of you guys to sign up for Twitter. I know you haven't quite yet. Did you? Yeah, I, I have Twitter actually from already. Uh, it's a, a kind of a unique name though. It okay. is at a name for this too. So I just kind of made up a, a random name. So and that's my Twitter at a name for this too. Is it the number, the number two? The number two. Name for this too. You can of course uh, find me at Zach Jones Live. Z A C H. J-O-N-E-S-L-I-V-E. And um, yeah, so if, if anyone, like, once again, is stuck around this long, <laughs> thank you very much. Make sure to uh, like, uh, subscribe, leave a positive review, you know, swipe right, whatever <laughs> Whatever you gotta do to help us out. And um, um, what else? Did I miss anything to <laughs> close the show? Anything else? I got nothing. Okay. We will see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye. Take care.